What's going on, everybody? This is Kenny Monsters with Last Laugh Studios. Today, we're going to be going over my steps for gain staging and balancing a mix. So we're going to be working in FL Studio for our example. Let's just jump in. Step one is resetting the pre-fader knobs in the, the channel rack. Now, you may or may not know this, but the channel rack volume knobs here are actually pre-fader, meaning that it is before the post fader in the mixer window. So some people make adjustments. I've seen this in, in different projects, but you know, just, just in case, we're gonna go ahead and hit reset on every single one of these volume knobs and bring them all back to where they belong. All right, all right. Now I could keep going, but mine are already set. So you get the point. Then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reset the post fader knobs in the mixer window. And you can see my volumes are all over the place right now. And that's because I've already mixed or gain staged my project. So let's go ahead and hit the reset button on all these two as well. Same thing. Come on. There we go. All right. So everything's back at zero. Now we need to listen. As you can clearly tell, we are way over zero. <laughs> We're clipping at this point. So how do we get it to where it is no longer clipping? All right, so what we need to do first is we need to figure out what the most important elements are. Now, I like to break this down into two categories, the drum section and the instrumental section. Now, in the drum section for hip hop, it's more than likely going to be the kick or the snare. Typically, it's the kick. So what I like to do first is I like to solo out my drum bus so that way my drums are the only thing that's playing and now, you're, now you'll hear that. And I exclude the bass from that. So um, we're gonna turn that off. We're going to turn off every other element in the mix of the drums. And the other thing I wanna do is I want to look at the kick itself by itself soloed out and see where it's peaking at. So I'm going to play that real quick. Okay, so we're hovering right below right below zero and I want to do it one more time with my other meter because that gives me more accurate number. Okay, so when that double kick happens, that's that's making the volume, uh, the peak volume jump up on the BX meter to the right of the screen to minus 0.7. That's just too loud to even start thinking about mixing. Um, and it's, it's definitely a contributing factor to why the master channel is so loud. And by the way, this BX meter is actually on the master channel. So it's giving me the overall uh, with with each one of these mixer channels it's feeding into that master channel, <clears throat> excuse me, and it's and it's letting me know how overall loud I am. So what I wanna do is I wanna take this kick and I'm gonna turn, matter of fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn down everything. So we're gonna turn it all down. Every other, every single shader here. 12 and 13 don't really matter anyways. We're gonna leave alone the instrument bus, the drum bus and the output bus. And the reason why is because Everything in green is feeding into the instrument bus, which then in turn feeds into my output bus. And drums are in purple. Um, and this is just typically how I do it. It just helps me see it faster. Um, you don't have to color yours or anything. It's not like a, that's, that's how you do it kind of thing. It's just how I prefer to do it. Um, and then obviously purple feeds into the drum bus, which then in turn feeds into the output bus. So my instruments and my drums all feed into one bus at the end of it before it reaches the master fader. And then the master fader, as you can see down here, is routed to my master, or my output bus here is routed to my master fader. And that's where I stick the BX meter. 
So moving on. All right, we have our kick drum turned all the way down. Once we've got our, our uh, most important element in the drums picked out, which is gonna be the kick in my case, being this is hip hop, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna shoot for a number. And that number for me is gonna differ for other people. There's no right or wrong way. Now, you're gonna see a lot of things on the internet, as I discussed in my other uh, game staging video before this one, that minus 18 is the most acceptable level because of various reasons. We're not going to go over those there. But if you want to know more about that, you can see the video I did on gain staging, which I'll put a card in this window for you um, <clears throat> to that video so you can watch that. But um, So basically, we're going to just start turning up the kick. I'm going to shoot for minus 12. And we're watching our meter. I'm watching both FL Studios meter over here. Now that I've got this, this channel clicked, and I'm watching my BX meter in the right-hand corner of the window, and I need to reset that, by the way. There we go. All right. Now, I want to point out to you what FL Studio is reading is completely different than what my peak meter here um, is reading in BX meter. And you're gonna have variances like that. Um, your manual for FL Studio and for BX meter probably has some explanation. I just shoot for a roundabout number. It's, it's serious, but it's not that serious, if you know what I mean. So we're gonna go for minus 12 in FL Studio just because most of you might not have BX meter. Okay, so we've got that set. Now we're, we're sitting at minus 12 <coughs> according to FL Studio. So what I wanna do next is I wanna bring in the other drum elements. So I'm gonna start with my snare next and I'm just gonna start turning the fader up until I feel like the level of it is vibing with my kick. This is called balancing. Okay, I like that. All right, next I'm gonna bring in my hat loop because that's the other important part of my um, my drum my drum riff that I've got going on here. Okay, now this shaker, open hi-hat, and this crash here, those were actually part of a percussion loop that I made myself. I really I really just couldn't find one that I liked that matched this and, and had the same vibe um, or a vibe that I was going for, so I actually just made one. And so really what I should have done is I should have bussed this to one bus and just said perk loop, but I, I like to control every little aspect of the mix, so if I want to turn the shaker up, I could turn the shaker up or the open hi-hat or the crash, I can, I can adjust those separately, so that's why I did it this way. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna solo out my shaker, my open hi-hat, and my crash, and I, I know from my, from my intention that the shaker was more important, so I'm gonna start with the shaker, and I'm just gonna start turning it up until I feel like it's at a good level, just for the sake of my hearing, and then I'm gonna bring up all these others, all these other uh, mixed mix, uh, channels here. Okay, so I've got that set relatively close to where I want it. Now I can make changes here in a few minutes once I bring all of these other elements back into it. And we're just gonna listen now. I just, what I'm doing right now is I'm listening, at, I'm listening to my perk loop 
that I've made and I want to see how it's sitting in the rest of my drum mix here. Okay, so for, for my taste, what I want to do is you see that I've got them all highlighted and the way that I did that, in case you don't know how to do that, is you hold down control and shift and you click on each channel with control and shift still held down and you're going to grab a hold of them and then all you got to do from that point is, is with your left mouse button, you can drag these up or down. So I want to turn down the perk loop just a tiny bit, just, just a bit, just to, just to see how it's going to sound and we're going to listen again. Okay, and and that's that's that to me is where it needs to be. Okay, we're we're not gonna we're not gonna watch the meters again until the very end because now now once we've got our initial gain stage set, which was what we did with the kick, what we're doing now is we're going for balance and vibe. So my drum my drums right now for me and my personal opinion are are sounding the way that I want them to sound. Everything feels like it's leveled where it needs to be. And so we're gonna move on to the instrument bus. Now I'm gonna engage the instrument bus, obviously click off of that, and everything is turned down. So now, once again, we have to make another decision. What is the more important element out of all those instruments? Well, I know that my piano sample was a pretty a pretty strong part of my, uh, my, my intention. So I wanna start with that, and we're gonna turn that up to match the drums. I just wanted to point something out real quick because I was thinking about it while I was doing it. Um, when, when, when you're looking at this, you're obviously you're 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 watching the meters, and if you notice the, the piano sample, um, it's not as loud as the kick or the snare. I mean, some of these it's probably louder than the the per perks and all the hi hats and stuff, but it's um it still doesn't to me sound like it's overpowering the kick drum but if you look at the fader knob the fader knob is actually almost even if not a slight bit higher than where the kick drum sits don't pay any attention to that when you're doing this all, all you're doing is listening you're 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 vibing to whatever it is that you created and you're trying to make sure that the volume sits where you want it to sit everything is is about balance at this point so let's go back to it. Let's listen again. Okay, so that sounds good. It's it's pretty it's pretty balanced. I have other instruments that I need to bring in, so I'm going to start bringing these up one by one. And there you go. Everything is balanced. I have my initial gain stage. So two things I want to point out. Um, <clears throat> so you want to take your time with the drums. The drums in hip hop are so important to the aesthetic of the sound. You need to spend some time balancing out your drums. Always make sure that, that you've got it set before you move on. 
once you've got it set, I can't stress to you enough, please, please, please save your work. <laughs> if you don't already do it and obsess over it, I'm not doing it here because I've already got a, uh, the same project open and um, saved elsewhere the way that I, I really want it. I'm doing this just for the sake of this video. So what I actually will end up doing may be a little slightly different than this, but just save, be obsessive over saving your progress. I have lost so much material because I didn't save and computers being computers, they're gonna fail, they're gonna crash on you, they're gonna just behave weirdly. I've even been working on a project uh, for hours and forgot to save and all of a sudden my video card just decided to glitch out and it shut all the programs that I had opened down and I didn't save my progress so I lost everything and had to start over from scratch. And, and if you're like me, when something like that happens, I just say fuck it and I'm done. I, I don't even come back to it because I'm pretty much heartbroken at that point and uh, I need a box of tissues to wipe my eyes. Um, so yeah, uh, next thing is that you're turning up the important instruments and you're balancing them with the drums. That's the most important thing. That's the overall, the overall goal here is to turn up everything to an acceptable level nothing's clipping and then at the end of it you're going to watch the meter and listen again and what i want to do is go back to my master fader look at my peak meter and we're going to look at the peak meter here which i'm going to reset on bx meter and we're going to listen Okay, we let it cycle through one good time. Um, so, okay, so what we what we saw on both meters is that they're hovering between minus eight, minus nine. It really just depends on which one you believe more than the other. Um, my ears aren't hearing distortion, at least not um, distortion in the sense of, uh, you know, garbled digital nonsense. What we wanna do from here is we wanna turn up each of these faders until it gets loud enough for, for us to continue mixing further. Because mixing, or loudness happens in mixing, not in mastering. Oh, we forgot one more thing. We're gonna go back real quick. This is another important thing too here that I, I uh, always do. I'm gonna solo out the instrument bus. I'm jumping ahead of myself here. We're gonna solo out the instrument bus so you can't hear it. And we're gonna work on, oh, the other thing I like to do too is I like to uh, just mute all of the hi-hats in any kind of percussion because it just for the sake of me listening it's easier for me to get the bass uh balanced with the kick and the snare without all the other stuff going on so we're going to start with that and i'm going to start bringing up my bass knob Okay, sounds good. Now let's listen to everything again one more time. We need to reset our meters. Hang on one second. Come on. Silence. I always let the beat ride for a few seconds because I wanna I wanna make sure that my meters are stabilizing. As you can see, when it first starts out, the peak meter is is jumping all over the place and it's trying to find that level. Um, and what you'll notice about most meters, at least with BX meter, it doesn't do it in FL Studio. Well, it does do it in FL Studio, but it does it in a different way. Is that once it hits a certain point, which for this was 5.8 in the left channel or minus 5.8 in the left channel and minus 5.2 in the right channel, um, 
unless it goes over those two numbers, it's not gonna it's not gonna be any louder. So that's my loudest peak in in this loop that I've got going on here. Now with FL Studio, you'll see a little green bar here. I'll show you real quick. Right there, you see it? The one that's dropping. That's basically it's a momentary thing, obviously, because it goes away, but um, it, it that's also it's the same thing. It it lets you know where that peak hit the loudest. So in both channels as well, too, because there was a left and a right side. But the thing is, is that our RMS level is still way too low. Now I saw a minus 14 in there on the left side. I didn't pay attention to the right side, but minus 14 is enough for me to give you some information. So if you were to take a mix at minus 14 RMS out to your car, your truck, your boat, whatever the hell you listen to music on outside of your own studio, what you're gonna notice is that you're gonna have to crank the volume up a lot in order to kind of match the volume level with songs that you hear on the radio or that you listen to on your you know, Google Plays, your Spotify's and all that stuff. And um, it's just not gonna be loud enough. So we're gonna need to get this as loud as we can get it right now before we do any treatment to it without clipping. That's the most important thing. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight all the channels again in the mixer rack because we wanna, we wanna raise the volume fader knobs together. And we're gonna turn it back on, we're gonna listen, and I'm gonna watch the meter again, and I wanna make sure that I'm somewhere below zero now my personal preference is minus one it varies for people you can do it however you want to do it like i said there's no right or wrong Okay, so we're closer now. Still not, still not where we're gonna be when we're finally done with the project, but we're definitely in a better place. We are fully gain staged and balanced at this point. If you wanted to make any additional tweaks, you could still make some tweaks uh, to the volumes of individual instruments or drums. But minus eleven is a good starting place RMS wise because we know from what we've read on the internet what we're being told is that, and what we can see when we put a master track into, you know, say, say I took a reference track and I threw it in here it, into FL Studio and just listened to it with the meter on it. I can guarantee you it's going to be somewhere between, you know, minus, minus nine RMS, minus uh, four or five RMS, somewhere in between there. We're pretty damn close. So the next steps are going to be critical to getting that loudness. And that's what we're going to talk about in my next video is uh, crest factor so crest factor and and some other things but it's going to probably be a two or three part series <laughs> there's a, there's a lot to cover um so without further ado if you like this video please hit the like button if you have not subscribed to my channel subscribe smash the subscribe button i need it and you guys have a good one i hope this helped